Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's most obnoxious music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Cunning Linguists album, Strange Journey, Volume 3. Releases in Cunning Linguists' Strange Journey series have never been quite as pivotal as the main studio albums in their discography, like A Piece of Strange, or Southern Underground, or 2011's incredibly conceptual honorology. However, I will say that this new record of theirs really stands out from those albums in that Natty, Deacon and No really seem to have gone all out when it comes to <laughs> bringing on features. Nearly every song on this album is jam-packed with guest rappers more than any other Cunning Linguist project, like Tone Deaf and Zombie and Del the Funky Homo Sapien and Self Titled and Apathy, Blue, Psalm One, Greaves, Murs, Aesop Rock, Sadistic, J Live and Master Ace, and there are even more people on here that I could be listing. And it's an array of different rappers, people who are blasts from Cunning Linguist's past, people that they haven't worked with before, up and comers, seasoned underground vets. And I don't think this endless gauntlet of features on this record actually waters the record down in the same way that it might on any other hip hop album because Cunning Linguist do a really great job of, of, of weaving these guests into the theme or the concept of whatever the song is that they're gonna be rapping on. Instead of having an album where everybody coming onto the record is allowed to rap whatever they feel like rapping about, we are given a really clear set of song concepts, like with Drunk Dial featuring Murs and Greaves, which uh, just from the title of the song, I'm sure you can figure out what it's about. There's all these sad, really love on the rocks verses from Blue and Psalm 1 on the song The Morning. Psalm 1 actually has one of the best verses on the entire record with this track. The song South California is about falling in love with a girl for whatever reason she's sort of in and out of your life for a certain period of time traveling. There's also the song Hot with Brothers in Arms, Self-Titled, and Apathy, who, I mean, <laughs> with this track must have come as like a package deal. And together they drop some of the most braggadocious, violent, hilarious rhymes that I've heard in a verse this year. And then the song The Four Format goes incredibly meta with Masta Ace and SOS, literally rapping about hip hop's history with physical mediums, whether that be with vinyl, where you are sampling from the vinyl, you're performing on turntables with the vinyl, hip hop being printed on vinyl, or cassettes making sort of bootleg tapes, mixtapes for other people to sort of spread great songs, singles, demos. Lyrically and thematically, Cun and Linguists don't really let me down on a single track here. Once again, they live up to the reputation of just being really great rap artists who care about the content of their verses and they care about earning listeners who, who want to read deeply into the things that they're saying and get some lyrical food for thought or just some kind of emotionally potent message. On every track here, Natty and Deacon bring really solid flows, but they focus more on their expressions than they do the, the more technical side of what they're doing, which is absolutely fine. Now, even though this is sort of a loose collection of very good tracks, Cun and Linguist try to distract from that a little bit with uh, these sketches that plop in and out throughout the album where we have like this robot computer voice talking who seems to be like running a spaceship and the, the, the theme of this album is traveling to Earth to find empathetic and intelligent life. Spoiler, at the end we do not find it. And the computer's name is Miley3000. In the middle of the album she <laughs> ends up wanting to uh, party and pop a molly. Uh, I don't know, not the best sketches. It just kind of seems like a, a really failed attempt to tie these songs together and, and make them feel like more of a package deal than they really do. I guess Cunning Linguist's other attempt at humor on this LP doesn't really stick with me either with a Drunk Dial, which is, is probably one of the worst songs I've heard these guys put out in a while. Features this song sample from the band Fickle Pickle, California Calling. It's an old little piece of piano pop from the 70s that sounds like uh, a Paul McCartney ripoff. It's almost a novelty song with all these really weird like phone conversation pieces in the middle of the track. It's like Marvin's Room before there was Marvin's Room. But anyway, just the sound of this sample with the dinky pianos as well as the very heavy horns playing over this beat too. 
th th this beat basically <laughs> transmits before the verses even start that there are going to be some whack bars on this thing. Especially with the singy songy vaudevillian chorus. Anyway, Natty's opening verse on this thing is absolutely hilarious. I love the, the, the word is bond. I need bond to get out of jail sort of wordplay that's going on at the start of this thing. But once Greaves' verse kicks in and he starts rapping about sending dick pics while drunk and that he is kind of horny, and these dick pics actually end up accidentally in Merz's phone, it just goes so overboard that I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I'm just done. I get that these guys weren't being that serious or anything like that, but, it, but it's not a song that I feel like subjecting myself to every time I listen through this tape. But no other tracks on this LP really struck me as, as being outright bad. What sort of ended up not impressing me as much as their previous release uh, is just the record itself in whole. Strange Journey is, is lacking in a little variety for me, a little sonic variety. There are way too many songs and, and instrumentals on this thing that are sparklers, and, and I wish, like the song Hot or like the song Kings, that I got a few more bangers. It just feels like, to me anyway, that there are just too many tracks on here that are that are trying to be the most meaningful thing that I've heard today. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I love hip-hop and I wish there was more hip-hop that was uh, just a bit more deeply in touch with its emotional side. Uh, but I just wish there were a few more exciting moments on this LP to balance out these incredibly mellow tracks. And yeah, I know that Cunnan Linguists and, and, and No are not known for having the most uh, grimy production style. Actually, I think as the group has progressed with each new record, their production gets a little more flowery, melodic, lush. Still, I guess I was just looking for a few more hard-hitting moments. All that aside, this is easily the most most ambitious release that Cunnan Linguists have put together so far in the Strange Journey series. And I think it's a great project to hold things over until they come through with an album that's a little more conceptual and focuses a bit more on the individual talents of Deacon, Natty, and No. I think this record is going to end up being a little bit of a, of a minor hit in Cunnan Linguists' discography, but still the quality is so high that it could win over a newcomer, most definitely. I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this thing. Tran? Zishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Cunnan Linguists, forever.